Welcome to this special best of edition of The Prayer Link. Today we take a look back at some of our favorite interviews that will encourage and inspire your life. We will begin with Pastor Craig Cooney. He's the senior pastor of Hope Church near Belfast, Ireland, and the author of several books, including The Tension of Transition and The Blueprint. Great books, by the way. His Instagram page, Daily.Prophetic, has nearly 100,000 followers where he posts powerful and timely words of encouragement for the body of Christ. Pastor Cooney recently joined us with more. Take a look. Welcome to the prayer link. Great to be with you, Wendy and Charlene. It's such a joy to, to be able to join you from across the pond here in sunny Ireland. <laughs> sunny, sunny, misty, but very green still. Very green, Charlene. Yes, green. Yeah. You're, you're going to love Charlene suit when you see it. All right, Pastor, if, if I have time to just check one thing on Instagram, I go immediately to your site because you seem to have your ear finely tuned to what the Spirit of God is saying in this season. And speaking of that, what do you believe is the most important thing God is saying to us for 2023? I don't think I can narrow it down to one thing, so let me try and narrow it down to three. Mm. The first one is this, the shaking will continue. And I would love to be able to tell you something better than that. But back at the end of 2019, the Lord gave me a very clear prophetic word about 2020 and everything that would happen. I posted it, people unsubscribed. I saw uh, the National Guard in the streets. I saw a, a, a huge uh, event happening that would affect the next decade. And people just, Christians don't like that stuff. Funny enough, and, uh, and people unsubscribed. But I really believe we are in what I call a decade of disruption. And we know that the global elites at Davos and these guys are all talking about 2030. That's a key year for them all. Oh. And I believe that we are in a decade of disruption where we are going to go from crisis to crisis. And some of them will be real, but many of them will be manufactured. Wow. Mm. And, the, and the reason will be to cause fear. Mm. Because a fearful population or an easily controllable population. And we've already and gone through we, that with COVID, right? Yes. That was a test run. I, I, I think, honestly, I think it was something that just happened. I'm not sure. It's, it may have been deliberate, may not. But I think it was seized upon very quickly to see how controllable people can be. And when we look back now, we go, how did we not let people say goodbye to their loved ones in mm. hospital? Yeah. Yeah. I was in a hospital last week here and half the ward had COVID and nobody cared. Mm. Three years ago, I couldn't have been allowed to visit my parishioners who were dying in that hospital. So, and nobody's asking those questions. So I do believe we are going to go from compounded crisis. And part of it, some of it will be real, but some of it will be to induce fear. And I think, I mean, the Bible talks about this. This is no, you know, Matthew 24, 20, there will be wars and rumors, of course, there will be shaking among the nations. I think we are seeing a, a geopolitical restructuring right now. Watch as, 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 as things start to move to uh, countries that were emerging, that, that, that we may not have heard much of in the past that are going to suddenly emerge to prominence some of the african countries some of the south american countries some and and also particularly watch the middle east mm, wow countries like saudi arabia the middle east mm -hmm. the middle east you know look at the book of revelation look at the entire scriptures where does everything center upon at the end the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. And at the minute, we're so focused on Ukraine and Russia and the States and South America and Brazil. Everybody's ignoring the Middle East. And when you start to see something uh, move towards the Middle East, I would pay very close attention. This alignment between Iran and Russia, 
Who would have imagined that 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. um, and yet the Bible clearly talks about that. So, so I would love to tell there is going to be shaking. There's going to be financial shaking. We're already starting to see the start of that. Mm. I honestly believe that that is going to get more significant. But I do believe in the word that many prophets are getting, and I would, I would subscribe to this, is that in the midst of the shaking, there will be a Goshen. There mm -hmm. will be a Goshen, Amen. the the Genesis that 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 God's people, if they will heed the voice of the Lord and obey the voice of the Lord, He will provide a a place of resource. And he will provide wisdom and ingenuity for us, not just to survive this time, but to flourish through this season and to resource those in lack. Amazing. Okay, Pastor, we've got four minutes. Uh, you wrote a <laughs> book that I absolutely recommend to everyone. It's called The Tension of Transition. Uh, you know, it's great for anyone who's going through a big change in their life. Many of the words uh, and advice that you give on Instagram are related to how to navigate transition and cross over into the new thing God is doing. Why is this such an important topic and how can we avoid getting stuck while we're waiting for the new thing? It came out of our own journey where we walked away from a church and the situation into nothing because God had spoke to us. And the phrase I often use is this, people always say that God never closes one door without opening another one, but they never talk about the hallway in between. Mm. Mm. And we find ourselves in a hallway in between where we knew God had called us out of something, we just didn't know what he was calling us into. Mm. And that could be a place, it could be a church, it could be a ministry, it could be a relationship, it could be anything. We know God is calling us out, but we're not sure what's next. And a lot of people get lost in the hallway wow. in between. Wow and discouraged and despondent. And that's where we found ourselves a little bit. And that's where the, the book came out of. And, and so that's why I think it's so important for us to learn how to navigate. And the journey I used in the book was the Israelites coming out of Egypt and wandering through the wilderness and entering the promised land. And unfortunately, most of them never made it through the wilderness. Mm, wow. But they, I, but they could have. But they could have. How do we do it? How yeah. do we make it? It's, you know, I think there's a few things. I think faith and obedience are always key. I mean, that is really what disqualified them. Their mm. lack of faith and their lack of obedience. Mm. And even going back to your previous question, this is a season where we cannot allow carnality, compromise and disobedience into our lives. Wow. Up next, Heidi Baker shares about her missionary work in Mozambique and her message about revival in America. Stay with us. Welcome back to this special edition of The Prayer Link. In 1980, Iris Global Ministries started with just two people, Heidi and Roland Baker. Today, it encompasses more than 2,000 missionaries, staff, and volunteers. That's right. The missionaries work in 73 ministry centers in 37 nations, bringing help and hope to the poorest of the poor. I sat down with Heidi to talk about her work and the hope for revival in America. Heidi Baker, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We know you have a busy schedule while you're here at CBM, but we're so honored to have you with us for the Prayer Link. Prayer Link is a show that we talk about the news, but we don't just talk about it, we pray about what, what is happening in the headlines. Uh, my first question for you is about your wonderful book, God's Got This, 40 Devotions of Courageous Faith, highlighting amazing stories from people around the world. What was the motivation and why did you feel it was important to compile such an amazing list of stories? Well, just as we all know, the world's shaking and people have all gone through, every single person on the planet has gone through something hard, something challenging, something painful. But how do we see it through the lens of, of the power of God, the love of God, and how do we as believers comfort one another and use our challenging situations to help other people as well. And so it's it's really stories of people who have inspired me, courageous faith, and they teach me every day. Powerful, powerful what God is doing in your life, Heidi, in Mozambique. You've been there for many years, since 1995. 
And you say right now with the persecution and everything that's going on there that it's the hardest time you've ever been through, but yet the most glorious. It is. Talk about that. Yes, I mean, when you see people that you care about losing their homes um, with this as a radical insurgent group in my province where we've lived for many, uh, many, many years. And when you see them losing everything, it really, it's painful and you see so much hunger and people hurting and people who have lost their lives. And so that's painful. And we need to weep with people who weep. At the same time, you see this, the beauty of Jesus in his believers who are just reaching out and making room in their homes. Like I've never mm. seen anything like it around the world where people who have so little are just saying, hey, hey y'all, come live with me. And, wow. and they share absolutely everything. We have over a million internally displaced people wow. now in Cabo Delgado. A million. a million, and there are more coming all the time because of the insurgent attacks. And yet the believers are just opening up their arms and sharing what they yeah. have. God is blessing crops. Obviously there's a lot, we do a lot of food aid as well and bring in the audio solar Bibles, but it's really the, the beauty of the Mozambican mm -hmm. bride of Christ mm -hmm who teaches us what, what true love and generosity looks Praise like. Praise God, I love that. Um, with regard to persecution, uh, you've talked about a shaking mm -hmm. that's coming. What's the message for the global church with regards to that right now? Fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher. Mm -hmm. We've lost people we love. Yeah. They're, they're in heaven, it's like a blink of an eye. And, and sometimes we, we just lose sight of that. We forget the beauty of eternity. Eternity's real. Mm. It's, not, it's not just a fairy tale. We're not just Jesus. saying kumbaya, you mm. know, it's a fairy tale land. Mm -hmm. No, eternity's real. Mm -hmm. And if we fix our eyes on Jesus and we understand the veil is thin, then we're going to spend the, whatever amount of time we have on this planet shining for Him. Hallelujah. And ask Him to just rip fear out of us mm -hmm. so that we can love well. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you think American Christians can learn from Christians in other countries like Mozambique who are being persecuted right now? What do you think we in America can learn from that? Should th we learn from I this? think fix your eyes on Jesus. Again. Mm -hmm. uh, again, telling stories. People that are very, very close to me that work on our team, mm -hmm. Shamoku, Shulumbu, uh, Jose, they've, they lost their homes, their mm -hmm. families lost their homes, their farms, their churches were burned to the ground. But they, instead of just feeling sorry for themselves, which is a natural thing, and there was a lot of weeping, they allowed um, their eyes to get off of their own pain and onto Jesus. And instead of them being victims, mm. um, they <laughs> said, we're gonna go out there and share. Yes. And they lead the teams, the distribution outreach teams. They share this glorious gospel. They go out day and night. These guys have Jesus. lost family members. Wow in this conflict, mm. this conflict, and they share the gospel with people who love them and people who don't yet know um, what love looks like. And they're mm. just fearless mm. in their love. And they say, you just never burn Jesus out of our hearts. And they go day in and day out. And it's not glamorous. What we do isn't glamorous. It's not something people just, oh, yay, let's go. It's hot, it's dusty, yes. it hurts. It can be scary if I'm real. Yeah. Um, for all of them, they've watched family members, many of them have watched family members be beheaded, uh, or they've seen countless amounts of body bodies, dead bodies, as they've walked and moved to Cabo Delgado, in Cabo Delgado, to Pemba, and they just keep going out. And they mm. teach me what love, courage, tenacity mm. looks like. And I, I'm not being funny here. I just want to be so real. Like, 
I don't feel worthy to walk with these guys because no one in my my blood family has ever been tortured, never been killed. And yet by some great grace, um, some great grace of, of Jesus, I get to walk with them mm. and learn from them and um, sit with them and beautiful and be the hands of Jesus. Wow. Up next, a bombshell from Beth Moore. She's opened up about her childhood abuse before. Now she's ready to name the man behind it. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Bible teacher and best-selling author Beth Moore is known worldwide for her ministry to women. And in her new memoir, she reveals her own personal trauma of childhood sexual abuse. That's right, Wendy. Beth also shares a haunting death wish as well as extreme challenges in her marriage. I recently spoke with Beth about her past and her present struggles. Take a look. In her latest book, All My Knotted Up Life, Beth Moore delivers a compelling self-portrait filled with unexpected twists and turns, with the final destination being God's enduring love and faithfulness. CBN News sat down with the prominent Christian leader at her Living Proof Ministry headquarters in Houston, Texas. We talked just days after the sudden loss of her brother Wayne, who along with her other siblings, appear on the cover of her new book. I just looked up to him and just loved him so, so much. We are reeling. But I had gotten him an advanced copy of the memoir, and, I, and it has moved me so much to know that he got to see himself through my eyes in those pages. The title, All My Knotted Up Life, parallels Moore's difficult childhood in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Why did you feel the need to be so vulnerable and so open about? I've always tried to be transparent in what, I, in what I shared, but I just get to be a little more specific this time around. Over the years, Moore has often talked about her childhood sexual abuse. For the first time, she reveals her father as her abuser. I'm not sure anything impacts the life more than your protector being your perpetrator. In other words, my father was the person on earth that I could trust the least. Growing up, this secret weighed heavily upon her. Normally, there is a sense of threat, like he would not have said, you better not ever tell this. But what he did say over and over was that we had to protect my mom because she was not stable. So he used that. So there was like, I'm going to not only split up my entire family, but I'm going to cause my mother to kill herself. Moore says her father's active participation in their local church made living with her abuse even harder. I got to watch him just, you know, prance up and down those aisles and teach his classes and usher and the confusion of that. I, the very fact that within those walls, I believed my Sunday school teachers over what I was seeing with authority at home, to me is a testimony of God's grace. A grace she would need in an even greater way later in life, in her constant struggle with the bad memories. I definitely had a death wish, definitely. It seemed to me at several points in my life, this is the only way out. The Bible teacher also shares about challenges with her husband's mental illness, how it has shaped her marriage of 45 years. The thing about what Keith had dealt with, with very severe PTSD and then bipolar, you never knew when there was going to be um, a, a sudden episode. As Moore reflected on those dark days, she saw hope as her anchor. I never knew what was coming when the sun came up, and neither did he. Neither did he. We had no idea what that day was going to hold. It might be wonderful. It might, before the sun set, it might be frightful. I guess the best thing that has come out of it for me and for us is that you talk about a woman casting herself on Jesus. While crediting God for holding her family together, Moore quickly points out how therapy also helped with her healing. Support is a necessity. 
be it uh, therapists, be it uh, a small group, whatever it is, but there has to be, there is such a sense of being locked in it anyway that there has to be a way that we are able to be around others and communicate with others. Moore has also seen her share of controversies. In 2016, she tweeted about the sexual abuse scandal involving then GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump. The backlash from churches was swift. She writes in her memoir, Daily I received word that my Bible studies were being pulled out of more churches. Some were boxed up and sent back to us. I was told some of them were burned. It affected me and my family profoundly. The whole face of the ministry changed dramatically. For years, Moore's teachings had been a feature of the Southern Baptist Convention, the denomination she had been a part of her entire life. It was there that she was baptized and began her love of scripture. In 2021, she found herself increasingly at odds with SBC leadership over issues ranging from women's roles in ministry, racial justice, and more specifically, its failure to care for sexual abuse victims. We've been taught somehow that the right thing to do is shelter the abuser and to the degree that we have somehow distorted such a doctrine of grace that we then are not protecting the abused. Moore eventually decided to leave. That was like a death that will probably take me a, a, a life time for whatever's left to continue to process. These are people I have and do love very much. Beth, you have demonstrated faithfulness to God, forgiveness, perseverance through all that you've endured. How did you tap into that grace and that strength? Uh, and how challenging has it been to minister to people even when you had personal issues going on in your life. I can't go back and relive my life. I can't go back and make a thousand decisions differently, which I wish I could do. I can't rewrite it. It is, it's just, it's just what it is. But I can see to it that the grace that the Lord has poured on me is not in vain. That is my hope. Up next, we're bringing you the word of the week, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the Prayer Link. And before we go, here is the word of the week from Brenda Crouch. Hello, Prayer Link family. When God became a man, he gave his only begotten son who was superior to everything created to be born through a virgin. Through this birth, he emptied all of his fullness upon humanity. Jesus, the Christ child, was fully human and he was fully God. He's the second person of the Holy Trinity. Yet Christ knew the struggles and the torment of being human. He possessed both human nature and the nature of God the Father. As these two natures concurred together for the salvation of the human race, the culmination caused him to sweat great drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. You see, it was the love of God that chose to embrace the crucifixion for you and I. Jesus knows every agony that you've ever faced in the lonely, dark woods of your soul. So many need encouragement now. Our human strength is, it often fails us, but you don't have to face that alone. May I invite you to follow as Christ did, embracing the Father's will. The life of a true believer is a cross-shaped life. Sometimes suffering is involved, but as we surrender to his love, he enables us to do all things through Christ. What feels like our death leads to our resurrection. May his resurrection power meet you in your brokenness. I'm Brenda Crouch. Amen. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Prayer Link. Remember, you can stay connected with us on Instagram. That's at the Prayer Link. And until next time, God bless you. And remember, prayer works. works.